this is Norman Kissinger from Redeeming the Time Brothers Ministries, and uh, uh, we've been talking about prayer, and I showed you my prayer card that I use to uh, keep up with all the ministries and people I want to pray for throughout the week, and um, basically it was half of a file folder uh, folded in half and half again, making eight columns, and then writing Monday through Sunday on it, with Sunday having two columns, and then writing down the names of all the people that I wanted to pray for, so that all the people that I put on my list, of course, get prayed for at least once a week, and if I want to, I can put them on the uh, on the prayer card more than once. And so it's a very flexible, easy way to uh, keep up with prayer. And again, I said there that all of you super techie people may be able to... So it will be very helpful because we don't always have those high-tech uh, phones and tablets and stuff around to be able to use. And uh, so uh, Gene and I were talking, and I think that uh, we'll, we'll also do some other low-tech things. Like I've been reviewing different books uh, over the last uh, year or so here on our ministry. And uh, so we'll continue to do that. But I, I talked last time also uh, about uh, the idea of praying at God's pace. So one of the things that writing down my prayer request did was it enabled me to slow down and for my mind to not race and to try to stay on each subject until I had prayed everything that I felt like that the Holy Spirit wanted me to say about that person or that ministry to ask what God wanted to um, for those people and ministries so that I could pray effectively because I don't know about you but when I pray I want my prayers to make a difference I want my prayers to be answered um, and in fact I want um, either my prayers to be specifically answered or I want the Holy Spirit to change my prayer so it can be answered I don't want to pray just for an activity uh, to pray but to pray effective uh, prayers, as it talks about in the in the book of James, um, you know, were fervent uh, prayers that that make a difference. So, uh, I talked about slowing down, praying at God's pace, waiting for God to show up when we pray, and by that I simply mean, of course, He's always there. But waiting until my heart is in such a place that I feel His presence, if you will, I feel like. Um, He's there and listening to me, and we're, we're fellowshipping and talking to each other. And that takes time, and uh, that's important when we're dealing with our kids or our spouse or our friends or people that we minister into their life. We need to take the time to talk to them and find out their needs, and, and uh, so we need to pray at God's pace. Uh, but the other idea that I was thinking about as I was uh, going to work and praying on the way to work and back uh, the last couple of days is the fact that um, so often uh, we insult God, I believe, by our prayers because they're just simply going to him with a list of things that we want. And we don't consider the idea that in prayer there are some things that in a sense we're giving to God. And you say, well, what can I give to God? Well, let me explain. So many times the Lord has brought me back to this place and I've had to, and we've had to rediscuss this lesson in my life. And that idea that somebody said, and, and this was a famous person, so please forgive me. I don't remember where the quote came from, but said that we need to be seeking God's face as well as seeking his hand. And by that, they meant that we need to be looking for God's presence, fellowshipping with him, um, getting to know him, getting to find out what his heart is in a matter and in our lives over just asking him to give us stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. The Bible talks about the idea that you and I are not right with God if we're not asking him to give us stuff and to solve problems for us and to be there for us. Uh, but there's another aspect of prayer that is fellowship between us and God. 
that we are getting something out of it in the fellowship and answered prayer, and he is getting something out of it in the fellowship that he has with us. <clears throat> somebody said that nothing, somebody um, also said that, that what changed their life more than anything was realizing that God wanted to talk to us as much as we needed to talk to him, that he was getting something out of the relationship and it wasn't just a one-way relationship where we're just, you know, um, talking to him and bringing our demands and then kind of waltzing on our merry way and not really getting to know him. So there is a fellowship aspect to prayer that we need to slow down and take the time with. You know, if we went into our, with our kids or with our spouse or our boss or our friend or whoever, and we just kind of went in and said, hey, I need this, this, and this, and this. I need this done, that done. Thanks for sharing. Uh, thanks for what you do. Goodbye. Kind of, if we did that, they would be offended at us that they, that we were not fellowshipping in the process. So prayer is also fellowship with God. So looking for God's heart in a matter, the Lord has been teaching me that I've been praying about several things and 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 counseling and some, some other issues in my life and what the Lord wants me to do and directions he wants me to take. And I finally come back yet again to the same idea that I came back to the Lord and needed to say to him, okay, what's your heart in this matter? You know, not, not only just what direction do you want me to go, but what's your heart? What do you, what, what's your heart? And that's more of a deeper fellowship thing, not just finding out what his plans and purposes are, but just knowing his heart and his mind and his soul and what he wants to accomplish, knowing him. We don't know God. God knows us perfectly, but you and I don't know him at all. We, we know some things about him, and we're very poor theologians, most of us. Uh, the, I have to say, this is, a, this is a whole different subject, but I'd have to say that the average fourth grader in a fourth grade Sunday school class 40 years ago knows more theology about God than I would say 70% of Christians today. Uh, so we don't even know enough about God, but we also don't know him. And, uh, and we only know him through the fellowship of prayer. Now, I may talk about this a little more, but I wanted to say this. So we need to be in our prayer having a, the principle of taking the time as we ask him, as we praise him, thank him, as we uh, intercede for others, as we ask him for the things we need. But there is a element of our prayer that is about finding out his heart, what he wants, what he wants to accomplish in every situation, what he feels about the situation, how he thinks about it. He wants to interact with us. David was a man after God's own heart, and Abraham was a man who was the friend of God. Uh, boy, I would like to that, that God would say about me one of those two things. That's about the two highest things God could say, you know, we want him to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Um, I would like for, as the demon said uh, to uh, the men that were trying to um, cast him out, you know, Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know, but who are you? Uh, boy, I, I would like to, um, I would like to be at such a place that God knows me intimately. You know, for that matter, even the spiritual world is, is afraid of me and my prayers. Um, and, and so there's that element. Now, I want to also say uh, kind of on a, that's more of a that's more of a um, an idea of what what we our heart when we go to prayer. It shouldn't just be about a list. We should go before God and want to know his heart. Are you looking for God's heart when you pray? Am I looking for God's heart when I pray? And the Holy Spirit convicted me that. So often I just go through a long list of things I want and I don't slow down and say, what's your heart in this person's life? Or what's your heart in this? God, what do you want? I'm just, not just what do you want to do in it, but what's your heart in it? So that we're, we're doing fellowship in, in that matter. Now, <clears throat> practically, all right, this is what I do. and I do this most of the time when I pray. And by the way, there's a million ways that you could, you know, follow the principles of prayer. But my, um, the main way that I, uh, that I pray is that I will usually pick a psalm, I will read through it, pray back the principles of praise and the things that it teaches me, so I'm hearing a little bit from God, as well as then 
after that, I go and ask God to show me, of course, what I need to change in my own life, what his heart is in my life, uh, especially as far as sin is concerned. But then also I ask God to help me with um, then ask, I, I go over that prayer list again. And I've added to that that if that I will at the end of my prayers, I'll find another psalm. I usually do it based on the days of the week and uh, uh, but um, days of the month, actually. So I pray today would I would pick one 30, um, 60 uh, every 30 and, and uh, pick one of those psalms for so that I'm kind of covering all of the book of Psalms. Uh, but um, but to then pray another psalm back to him. So I kind of start with praise and thinking about God and finding out his heart because Psalms very much is one of the many books that talks about, of course, his heart and then end with that in my prayers. And that's been a big blessing. And I'm trying to do that now two or three times a day uh, and uh, just seeking God in that, in that matter by trying to find his heart. America needs a revival and revival is going to start with the church having revival and we have revival when we throw off religion and begin to seek God in a personal way. All of us need to do that. And uh, so just some encouragement for you. I hope that's helpful. Uh, but the next time you pray, take the time to be asking God what his heart is in your life, what his heart is in the life of people you're praying for, what his heart is in the world around us of what he wants to accomplish. Uh, that is, I think, you know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a, the, a fuller even understanding of that. Well, God bless you. Um, I brought up several things, and I think I will probably come back and revisit a couple of these. But I hope you have a great weekend, and um, uh, I love you. Uh, my brother and I, we really appreciate all of you. We uh, just... Um, just be encouraged as you grow in the Lord and uh, be sure to watch his uh, devotions, which are just wonderful and will just really bless you. God bless you all. You have a great week.